All right, everyone, welcome back to RJK English. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon and share this with someone else that is learning uh, Siddhartha in school or maybe learning for IELTS or wants to uh, uh, push their English learning forward. Or maybe someone that uh, loves learning about South Asian uh, philosophy. All right, um, so we've heard that uh, Siddhartha does not value words nor thoughts. He only values things and that through things we, we truly learn. So Govinda said, but what you call thing, is it something real, something intrinsic? Is it not only the illusion of Maya, only image and appearance? Your stone, your tree, are they real? Remember the idea of Maya, that everything's an illusion and that behind it is Brahman? That's from the beginning. And uh, Siddhartha mentioned it last time, last video that we were at, but also that was what he believed when he became an ascetic. This also does not trouble me much, said Siddhartha. If they are illusion, then I am, then also, if they are illusion, then I also am illusion. And so they are always of the same nature as myself. It is that which makes them so lovable and venerable. That is why I can love them. And here is a doctrine at which you will laugh. It seems to me, Govinda, that love is the most important thing in the world. It may be important to great thinkers to examine the world, to explain and despise it. But I think it is only important to love the world, not to despise it, not for us to hate each other, but to be able to regard the world and ourselves and all beings with love, admiration, and respect. I understand that, said Govinda, but that is just what the illustrious one calls called illusion. Notice Govinda is only, he wants doctrine. And he always thinks that there's a truth that he's going to point to. In a way, Govinda is not thinking for himself. Right? Siddhartha is trying to tell him what he experienced, and Govinda is going, oh, no, I know what that is. It's this thing here. Uh, the Buddha taught about that. Have you ever met someone like that in school? You try to tell them about your experience, and they go, oh, I already know that. Um, uh, Kant said blah, 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 or uh, Hume said this or that. You, you know, everybody, you know, wants to talk about what they learned in a book. That's not what Siddhartha is talking about. So, but this is what, just what the illustrious one called illusion. We're down here. He preached benevolence, forbearance, sympathy, patience, but not love. He forbade us to bind ourselves to earthly love. Okay, now we see the difference between Siddhartha in this book and the Buddha. Okay, and it's up to people that really know Buddhism to say if this is true or not. Okay, uh, it's raining outside. I'm going to close this window. Okay, because this is Hesse's Buddha, the, the Siddhartha. Um, I know that, said Siddhartha, smiling radiantly. He's smiling. I would have been irritated. <laughs> I know that, Govinda. And here we find ourselves within a maze of meanings within the conflict of words. For I will not deny that my words about love are in apparent contradiction to the teachings of the Gautama. That is just why I distrust words so much. For I know that this contradiction is an illusion. Okay, so maybe it's not different. People that know Buddhism should tell me what they think. I know that I am at one with Gautama. How indeed could he not know love? Who He who has recognized all humanity's vanity and transitoriness, yet loves humanity so much that he has devoted a long life solely to help and teach people. Also with this great teacher, the thing to me is of greater importance than the words. His deeds in life are more important to me than his talk. The gesture of his hand is more important to me than his opinions. Not in speech or thought do I regard him as a great man, but in his deeds and life. The two old men were silent for a long time. Then, as Govinda was preparing to go, he said, I thank you, Siddhartha, for telling me something of your thoughts. Some of them are strange thoughts. I cannot grasp them all immediately. However, I thank you, and I wish you many peaceful days. 
Inwardly, however, he thought, Siddhartha is a strange man and he expresses strange thoughts. His ideas seem crazy. How different do the illustrious one's doctrines sound? They are clear, straightforward, and comprehensible. They contain nothing strange, wild, or laughable. But Siddhartha's hands and feet, his eyes, his brow, his breathing, his smile, his greeting, his gait, affected me differently from his thoughts. Never since the time of our illustrious Gautama passed, never since the time our illustrious Gautama passed into Nirvana, that means he died, have I ever met a man with the exception of Siddhartha, whom I felt, about whom I felt, this is a holy man. His ideas may be strange, his words may sound foolish, but his glance and his hand, his skin and his hair, all radiate a purity, peace, serenity, gentleness, and saintliness, which I have never seen in any man since the recent death of our illustrious teacher. So this does show that in this time period, they did see um, goodness as showing on the face. But also, we know this, right? We have met older people that we know that they are good. We have a pretty good idea that they are good, even if we don't understand all they say. I have some people like this. Um, uh, uh, Noam Chomsky, you know, or uh, Malcolm X, actually, too. I would listen to them even if I don't totally understand them or even if I don't totally agree with them because to me, they are good people that I want to emulate. You know, maybe you have your own. Okay, let's keep going. While Govinda was thinking these thoughts and there was a conflict in his heart, he again bowed to Siddhartha full of affection towards him. He bowed low and quietly seated. He bowed low before the quietly seated man. Siddhartha, he said, we are now old men. We may never see each other again in this life. I can see, my dear friend, that you have found peace. I realize that I have not found it. Tell me one more word, my esteemed friend. Tell me something I can conceive, something I can understand. Give me something to help me on my way, Siddhartha. My path is often hard and dark. So we see that Govinda is relentless in asking for words. He also is seeking. So he can't do anything but that, right? At least he hasn't given up. But he's still looking for words. So here we go. Siddhartha was silent and looked at him with his calm, peaceful smile. Govinda looked steadily in his face with anxiety, with longing. Suffering, continual seeking, and continual failure were written in his look. Siddhartha saw it and smiled. Bend near to me, he whispered in Govinda's ear. Come, still nearer, quite close. Kiss me on the forehead, Govinda. Although surprised, Govinda was compelled by a great love and presentiment to obey him. He leaned close to him and touched his forehead with his lips. As he did this, something wonderful happened to him. While he was still dwelling on Siddhartha's strange words, while he strove in vain to dispel the conception of time, to imagine nirvana and samsara as one, while even a certain contempt for his friends' words conflicted, and with a tremendous love and esteem for him, this happened to him. And uh, what what thing happened to him? We're going to stop here. <laughs> we'll finish it next time. You have to come back. All right. So something's going to happen to him. All right. Um, I will see you next time and we'll finish off this chapter and finish off the book. All right. You're almost there. Great job. See you.